Yeah, we're three weeks into the season, and um, you know our team obviously is six and zero, and we've had a really good start to the season. So, really pleased with where we're at. Um, the way that our schedule has kind of fallen, it's been really hard to get in the gym and, and train a lot, um, and it's been hard on our emotional and physical level just because of the number of matches we've had in such a short period of time with with little rest. But um, I was proud of our team this weekend against two teams that played extremely well. Um, I think the level of volleyball around the country is getting better. I think the coaching is at an extreme high level, and just pleased we were able to get away with two victories this weekend. Yeah, Derek, uh, your serving seems so much better, and I was curious if you could delve into that. And was that maybe the biggest emphasis on improvement this year? Well, it's for the last two years, it's been a big emphasis. I think, you know, I, I think it's the hardest thing to, to get across the fans. The serve in volleyball is like having a great offensive line. You've got to be able to push teams off the net, and you've got to be able to get them in some situations where there's only one option, and we have a chance to um, decrease their hitting percentage and give ourselves a chance to. You know, transition and score. So it's a huge focal point, um, and it's something that we spend a lot of time on right now. And I think we've gotten better at it this year. Um, we didn't have a great serving weekend this weekend, but um, overall, we have we have the the potential to be a very good serving team. Melanie's a big part of that. You know, it's she's at about 19 percent air right now. We'd like to get down to about 15, but you can see she goes on some point runs, and so she's scoring real points for us. Uh, in that fourth set last night, I think she was responsible for four, four, three, you know, three points, which is a lot from one server. Coach, we were talking about a little earlier off camera. The, the It's been a different ride this previous year and change. Um, how much have you had to strike that balance between giving your, your team rest, but also dealing with what you did, which was a tough pre- conference schedule. Yeah, so this is actually our third semester in a row of playing. Um, so we haven't had any time off, and an emotional break has been very short. This summer, we really tried to give them a three or four week break and then told them during summer school to try to only come in a few times a week, um, trying to get them some more rest. But the way this our preseason is get up, it's you can tell right now it's not only a physical um, part right now, the mental side of it's it's there as well. So today they have off. Um, hopefully we can get them some quick practices and get some training in before we play a on Friday. Jerry, if I saw right yesterday, your new setter looked like she was eligible, or Correct. she played, or did she play? Or she did not play yet. Okay. Yeah. What's what's going on with her? And so she was uh, finally admitted. Um, you know, she was a, she's a transfer, and so she just was admitted. I think last Wednesday or Thursday. So she is obviously catching up on some coursework with the matches that we had. We just had did some setter training with her, um, kind of away from the team. This week we'll start integrating her with some of the hitters and getting her acclimated and kind of see where she's at in this competing side. But, you know, it's going to take some time to get her in. Because um, it's, it's funny, what struck me about seeing her was just a new player, you know, because there's, there's so much is made about who returns and all that. Right. How, how has it been integrating a couple new faces? But, you know, this is still the Logan, Skyler, Jenna, right. You know, right on down the line. Yeah, we obviously have a really good team. And, you know, I think obviously my job is to bring in the best talent in the country and let people compete for it and see if we can give us some different options or different looks um, from a defensive side or offensive side. So, um, yeah, we're excited about it. But it's, it's what we do year in and year out. And we, it's my job to kind of integrate them and make sure that we're a tight unit and playing well. Um, you know, the fan base always gets excited about A&M. Does your team, does it, does it, the uptick go up at all going into this one? Yeah, I think it's super exciting. You know, obviously this group doesn't know the rivalry like former classes because there's not the football and the basketball and all that always going on. But they know about it and they're super excited about it and they know what it means for the state and be a part of it. So this, I'm sure this match will be more about calming them down emotionally and making sure that we come in level-headed and just play the way that we can. Uh, what would you say some of the areas that you want to see improved after you know this gauntlet you've kind of run? Yeah, I think I mean uh, we want to serve and to continue to get better. Um, we need our our first contact touches to be a little bit better. Some of that communication in there, um, and then our defensive touches. I thought yesterday in the first game against uh, Notre Dame and up to nine points, we were some of the best we've been. I mean we were we were striking it hot there, and then our touches kind of fell off a little bit, and they picked up their game and. 
in that area. So there's some systematic things that we need to introduce. We need to get, get our backcourt a little bit more involved. Uh, obviously, we need to get Breon Butler more and more. Um, you know, we were able to finally get her going a little bit yesterday, um, pretty much for the first time all season long. So she's a huge part of this team, and um, we need her, her output. You've talked about the physical and emotional struggle. Can you kind of talk about the methods that you've been using lately to keep the players fresh and be able to keep playing? Yeah, I think with this day and age, you, you got to use the players as a, as a reference point of where they are. You know, and we have we have a program that we use, and they're filling out you know an iPad every day, and we're talking to them individually of of where they are emotionally and physically. Uh, we have a lot of trust in our captains of where they are. So, and then we also have kind of a, a trim of a workload that we kind of manage on a daily basis. So we have from our sports science how much we should be working on in the gym, and then also there's that emotional piece. So, we this week, this is a this is about getting tough this week, until th we get through next Wednesday, we've kind of got to just grind this out, and then they'll get some days off. We'll probably give them three out of four days off um, at that point to just kind of emotionally get some rest and and get their bodies in order. I, Jared, I think that's fascinating, the, the mental aspect of all of this. Um, carrying the number one ranking is not easy, right? Uh, and doing what you guys want to do this year, that's not easy. I mean, I know you're not thinking about that right now, but, but just how, how do you think they're doing at carrying that on a daily basis? Well, the good news is we've been carrying it for a long time in this program. So it's the players that come here are expected to be kind of a, a top five program, and, and number one is is where we're at a good amount of time. But for us, the, the emotional side of learning how our players are uh, on and off the court, uh, you know, adults don't realize that these kids are going from eight in the morning till nine o'clock at night, and then they're traveling, and they got papers, and they're not getting a whole lot of sleep, and. There's just a whole lot of workload, and so for them, that this is kind of the first time in their life that they've been in this kind of grind. So really trying to understand their their makeup. Uh, each player is a little bit different, um, but it's important to understand their their emotional capabilities, um, but also pushing them so they get a little bit tougher when those times are needed. So it's it's a real fine balance of what that is, and and we're you know talking to them about it often with them. Yeah, it's a, I mean, we try to walk them through that in the, in the recruiting process, but it's, it's a physical and an emotional toll, um, especially at a university with such high uh, academic prestige. And it's, you've got to be able to create a culture where the upperclassmen are um, helping the younger players. Even the freshmen this year that, are, that played last spring, they're at the point where like, this is what preseason is all about. And they're like, yeah, it's just starting. So... Um, but they'll get through it, uh, like the players have, and, and we've got to be ready. But it's it, the challenge of the season is always: can you match the emotional output that the other team is? Because at Texas, you get the best shot from everybody. It's their national championship match, and so there's there's a difference in terms of the emotional uh, responsibility that you have putting on that uniform. Uh, we talked about volleyball getting better around the country. You see Kentucky losing to Creighton, and Baylor losing a couple. And how much parity you think is struggling? You, you have your typical y'all and Stanford and people like that near the top, but how much parity is there now? There's so much more. I mean, I was talking with someone this weekend. You know, in the past you used to, used to know the four or five teams that would probably be in the Final Four. I think this year there's probably 12 to 16 teams that could make it into the Final Four. I mean, there's that many good teams, considering that upsets are kind of the, the matchups that they have. But yeah. there is a lot of good teams. Uh, the coaching has significantly got better. Um, the technology uh, is a little bit more like money ball and baseball. Like we have statistical information that I have an 80 page report that comes out for every team that we play. Yeah, but I don't get into all the 80 pages. We kind of, <laughs> but there's things that we pull out and we know that we need to look at, but yeah. we can really kind of fine tune of, of how to create a scouting report and what we're looking at and how to attack weaknesses and percentages. And, and the, the whole country has that. Now they have their different makeups of how they go about it and look at it, but um, there's no hiding anymore. Uh, and with the way technology is and filming is, like, uh, everybody's a lot more invested as coaches. And I think there's a lot more um, data analytic people on staff that becomes really, really important. Does everybody have a depth analyst on their staff? Most everybody does, yeah. Or they have something that someone that's doing that for them. Yeah. So every, basically what happens is the court's in the nine zones on each side, and each contact is evaluated. Right. 
and the results of that and percentages of when you're doing certain things of your capability of scoring on those rotations. Coach Elliott, uh, you're talking about the money ball, you know, aspect, the science aspect. Of it. Is this? Do you guys just use it on the coaching side, or do the players actually get into it and, you know, get into the data and say, okay, I can improve, or are you just sharing the data with them? Well, there's two parts. So there's the, the the money ball side of it, the analytics, but there's also the, um, the, you know, the physical component, our, our trim load, how much we're working, where our emotional pace is, all this kind of stuff. Those two kind of combined become a big part of it. But the, the analytics side of it, they have film. Uh, we can go back and tag it. Like what happens is it's, the film is done in 15 minutes after the match. So it's uploaded. They can watch every one of their swings or every one of their passes. We can go in there and tag every one of their plays that we want them to watch. Um, so it's a great way for them. It's a learning science for them. Um, they can go in there and watch you know, other professional matches that are going on in Europe or Olympic Games. and So it's just a great learning tool for them to be able to have. But yeah, they're invested in it, but they don't, the scouting report is very dumbed down. It's very simple, and it's these are the things that we're trying to do based on their tendencies. And don't worry about that. We'll make the adjustments during that. But we don't need them to know so every analytics. Use the emotional part to self-regulate, or do they see that part too? Where, you know, they just yeah, I mean they're part of this whole process. You know, it's trying to get them to buy into it. Um, it's trying to get them to understand it. Um, it's trying to get them to be honest about where they are, um, and that has to happen through conversations with our staff and. We have a great leadership group right now, and this team is really into it right now, so they're doing a good job. And, you know, we know where they are emotionally right now. And so our job is to make sure that they get fresh and also know that they got to kind of grind a little bit. So obviously, players have been going back to classes now and are kind of a little bit escaping the COVID bubble from last year. What has that transition been like, and how is that, you know, I feel like that might be mentally split where players are a little more? Well, I think getting back to being normal is, is a really big part of this. And our players are smiling a lot more. I think they're in a better emotional side of it. You know, I, I'm not sure that the magnitude of people understand the, that coaches have such a big responsibility for their emotional health right now. I mean, it's becoming more and more of a, a public eye, but it's been something that I've been dealing with for 21 years here. So there's that happens through relationships and communication and seeing where they're at. But we're, we're always trying to find times for them just to be 18 to 22 year olds and have fun as well. And so it's on our calendar throughout the year and trying to find times for them to enjoy life because that's what they should be doing too. So what are, are you doing paintball? Are you going movies, bowling? You know, we, what we did this year, we went to the F1 racetrack and went go-karting. Oh, you did? Yeah. When did you go? Three weeks ago? Yeah, that was a week before the season. Yeah. No, I, I was fired up. Who was the best? Me? <laughs> and Eric? Uh, <laughs> no, they had a blast. It was so much fun and just seeing how each driver, like some people surprised me, like they were, they were pretty fast and, and going, so it was good. Yeah. How easily does a 6'4 person fit into a company? My knees were really wide. <laughs> but if you've never done it, you should do it. It's a, it's a, those, those cards move. I think they're more trying to focus on being better every day. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, there's a lot of good teams. They know that. And there's a process. You know, as we told them yesterday when we were kind of in the thick of it with Notre Dame, like, we want to be in this situation. We want to embrace being stressed out. We want to be embrace being pushed. Um, because the more opportunities we get into that, how you handle that emotional aspect of the game is a critical component. Because, I don't know, volleyball is a, is a huge swing of points. And yesterday there were large swings of points you know our side out game wasn't as our first ball side out was really high but our transition side out game wasn't as good um but you've got to be able to handle those emotional highs and lows and being able to focus when you're down a few points i actually have not watched film on him yet i made a pack with myself to take the day off and just enjoy uh my backyard <laughs> no <laughs> a nap <laughs> at a barbecue.